Hey, what's up guys? Matt here coming to you from Laidlaw's Harley-Davidson. So today we're gonna to be comparing the different fairings that are available on Harley-Davidson motorcycles. And really the bulk of the conversation is gonna be around the two frame mounted fairings. So that is the Road Glide Shark Nose fairing and also the Lowrider ST fairing that was just launched in the 22 model year. We're gonna be talking about the Batwing fairing as well that can be found on the Street Glides or the Ultra Limited or the Electro Glide Standard. But really we wanted to focus in on the two frame mounted or stationary fairings and obviously this conversation goes beyond just the fairing it also delves into the model specifically because there's a lot more than just the fairing when it comes to the overall ride and the comfort and the functional benefits that you're gonna get out of these two different bikes and we're really gonna weigh out the pros and cons of each of these two different models and this video couldn't be coming at a better time Harley Davidson this morning just announced their next installment in the icons collection so their second bike being the El Diablo and the El Diablo is a variation of the lowrider ST I'm going to be doing a full video on that as soon as I get my hands on one. But basically the El Diablo, it's a limited edition bike, much like the Electroglide Revival that we saw last year. That was a reproduction of the 1969 Electroglide. This bike here in the El Diablo is a reproduction of the 1983 FXRT. Super exciting announcement. This bike is rad, but you're basically getting a Lowrider ST. You have the Rockford Fosgate audio bar that is typically something that you have to bolt up that's offered out of the parts and accessory catalog. But on the El Diablo it comes standard and then the El Diablo just has a lot of really cool finishes and graphics and stuff throughout the entire bike obviously you have an exclusive paint set on here as well and these bikes are always limited at 1500 worldwide and they are serialized bikes but anyways back at the subject at hand we're going to be talking mostly about the road glide and the lowrider ST and really we're going to help you guys nail down exactly which of these two bikes are best for you there was a lot of excitement when the lowrider ST first came out and it being a lot more touring capable soft tail something that you can really go out and get on the highway at high speeds long duration and have that wind deflection and you also have the saddlebags but how exactly does it match up against the big boys the road glide and the street glides and also the limited versions of both of those bikes well me and a couple of my guys Andrew and Mickey took the three bikes out and we put them to the test and we want to nail down and give you guys as many details as we can exactly what we feel about these bikes and in what type of riding situations and circumstances are going to be best suited for each of these two models For a long time, we've just had the two fairings from Harley Davidson, and you know there was the Sport Glide fairing for a little bit there, but it was so small that you know really you didn't have that much wind deflection benefit from the Sport Glide fairing. And there's other fairings that Harley Davidson offered through the parts and accessory catalog, like the quarter fairing that they offered that was really popular, like on a Lowrider S. And those are certainly pretty good, but Harley hasn't had what I would consider a full-size fairing outside of the Road Glide and the Street Glide since since I can remember, you know, for a very long time. And so with the introduction of the Lowrider ST, we now have this FXRT style fairing that Harley Davidson nailed it on the styling. Just capturing enough of the retro style of that fairing, but also making it more of a modernized fairing and you know, making it very functional as well. Hey guys, this is Mickey with Laidlaws here. And today we're gonna talk about the Lowrider ST versus the Road Glide. As far as wind protection goes, I was pretty impressed with the ST. Uh, I've ridden a few different fairings the last two years I spent with my electric glide the Batwing fairing. I've ridden road glides a fair amount, not quite as much as the Batwing, and I'm putting an RT fairing on my next bike. So I'm interested to see the RT fairing versus the ST fairing. I was really impressed with the ST fairing. Uh, one of my tests for fairings is to leave my visor open and I could get to about 60, 65 miles an hour before I felt like I needed to close my visor on it, which is pretty impressive for a smaller fairing. I think as far as when protection goes, for me, I'm more torso than maybe most people. So I pretty much sit at my head over all windshields. And I'm usually not looking for wind coverage on my face. I wear a full face helmet exclusively. So I'm looking for wind protection on my body. For me, that's where the exhaustion comes from. I have a bad back. And so if I want to stack days and I'm riding, having the wind protection on my body is more important to me where I don't feel like I'm using my core to hold myself up on the motorcycle quite as much. So in that respect, not quite as good as a full-size fairing. I feel like the Batwing did really well over the last couple of years. I put a lot of miles on that bike and uh, it did really well uh, as far as the body protection goes. I think the Road Glide is probably my favorite fairing for protecting the body. 
but very, very close second on the ST. Again, I am looking forward to see how the RT fairing is. I've ridden a few bikes with the RT fairing, but I haven't put serious miles on one, so I'm looking forward to that and kind of comparing all three in the future. Hey, what's up guys? Andrew here from Blade Laws Harley Davidson, and Matt and I just got off of the Lowrider ST and the Road Glide Special. I've owned a Road Glide Special before, did plenty of miles on it, went across the country and stuff like that. So getting on a bike like this, the power to weight ratio is just something I felt right off the bat. Cracking the throttle, you know, this potent 117 motor in this small package, you really feel a difference cracking that throttle. It is awesome. I mean, compared to the Touring STs, uh, like the Street Glide and the Road Glide STs, they got the same motor, but the package is a little bit different. Obviously, those two bikes weigh a little bit more. Getting on this thing, just cracking that throttle and going on the freeway, that, that power to rate ratio you really feel. So that was something of the first impressions I got that was really awesome. Wind deflection, kind of between the two bikes, I favor more of the Touring platform. The Road Glide fairing, does a little bit better as far as wind deflection. Obviously it's a bigger mass that deflects more wind from your face and body and stuff like that. There are aftermarket companies that will make a windscreen for this thing to kind of give you more of that wind deflection. Cruising on the freeway on this bike, it's a good feeling. It feels solid, it's planted, but between both of them, if you're doing a lot of highway miles, you're doing cross country or two up riding, I would recommend more towards a touring platform. That's Harley's bread and butter right there. But this soft tail platform, I would recommend, you know, some Someone that is between these two bikes, it really boils down to kind of how you're gonna use the bike and what the bike can do for you. Do you see yourself doing a lot of two-up riding? Are you gonna be a more of a weekend rider kind of commuter? I would choose this bike if I'm commuting. You're doing a lot of traffic, a lot of lane splitting, at least out here in California. You do a lot of solo riding, a lot of canyon carving. The soft tail platform, in my opinion, outshine the touring platform. Simply because it's smaller, the wheelbase is shorter, has more of a flickable characteristic to it. So I, a lot of times I get questions that people ask when they come in here and they say, okay, well, now that I can get all the benefits of a soft tail chassis, na namely the better power to weight ratio, you know, the agility going through canyons and things like that, you've got a little over hundred pounds less weight on the soft tail chassis as well. A lot of people say, okay, well, now that I can get the ST with this fairing on here, I can really have the best of both worlds and, and it's like the perfect hybrid bike. And it is a great hybrid bike. I will definitely say that, but I still think that you should really take a good close look at how you're going to be using using each of these two bikes to determine which one is really gonna be best for you. Because ultimately, and I'm gonna kind of jump to the conclusion here, if you're really a hardcore tourer, the touring chassis bike is still gonna be a better bet in most situations for you. And I say most because I, I feel like if your size lends to this bike a little bit better in terms of just the way you fit the bike and your physical capability and stature of handling a soft tail a lot better than you can a touring bike, then you're gonna get a lot of the touring capability out of a lowrider ST while still being confident in your ability to handle and, and maneuver the motorcycle. But if you're someone that gets out on the road, is constantly logging like a lot of miles and you can benefit from the storage space, the lowrider ST has saddlebags. However, when you're going on a multi-day trip, every cubic inch counts. And so you do have the larger bags on the touring platform. That's one of those things that make it a little bit more of a road warrior, long haul bike. I will say another thing, a lot of people criticize Harley Davidson's for being heavy. They are heavyweight cruisers, but if you have the power and the engine is tuned correctly to handle that weight, the weight out on the open road in a lot of times, a lot of situations can actually be a good thing to a certain extent. You know, you don't want, you know, a 2000 pound motorcycle rolling down the road, but passing trucks out on the open road, a lot of crosswind situations, a little bit of weight behind you can go a long way and just feel like you're a little bit more secure and everything. That's not to say that you're gonna get blown around on the soft tail, that's, that's not what I'm saying at all, but you do have a little bit of an advantage with the touring chassis as opposed to the soft tail platform in that regard. Now, if you're someone that mostly favors around town, never really going more than like a tank of gas in a day, which is about 200 miles, you're not really venturing more than that, and, and, you're, and you're someone that really favors the agility, the performance, the power to weight ratio of a soft tail, then a soft tail is really the slam dunk, the best bet for you. And to have that capability of taking the bags on and off, I would say is really, really nice. As far as 
The bike difference is at only 100 pounds difference, the Lowrider S really feels like a lighter bike. It really feels like a, a smaller bike. Part of that might be your foot positioning. So the rider triangle is different on it. I do, I like the bars, the stock bars, I actually don't hate them that much, but the stock foot positioning is just not really conducive to comfort for my body type. I am way more comfortable on a touring bike, but it did feel really light and I really enjoyed riding it and it, it Man, the 117 on a lighter bike is really zippy and it got up to 80, 85, no problem on the freeway before I even knew I was going that fast. So pretty impressed by the bike overall. For me personally, I'm gonna stick with touring bikes. I don't think I'm ever gonna get a uh, mid-sized frame bike. I do currently ride an 89 FXR, so I guess I'm putting my boot in my mouth there a little bit, but um, she's my daily for the moment and I have the same issue with that. It's, that's, a, that's a low rider and uh, I feel like my knees are in my throat most of the time with it. That has just a smaller T-Sport style fairing on it, which in my opinion gives zero wind protection whatsoever. Kind of my test for that is if I wear a light button-up shirt, I can see or I can feel that my shirt is rising up if the wind is hitting me and pulling my shirt up. And that wasn't the case with the ST fairing. I was really impressed by that. It, uh, it did give me that body protection down low, which is what I really like. Like I said, getting up to 65 miles an hour with my visor open, no problems. I wear contacts and I hate the wind in my eyes. So uh, I was impressed by that. For me, I think if you're really stacking miles, and this, this is really a subjective thing in my opinion, because there are guys that ride Evo Sporties with a hardtail cross country like it's nothing. I'm not one of those guys. Um, I couldn't do it even if I wanted to. So I like comfort. I ride longer trips. I like the longer trips. Even with having a bagger and an FXR at the same time, I never rode the FXR unless the bagger was in the shop. They're just more comfortable. The lighting on the Rogue Light, obviously you get two headlights. They're both frame mounting fairings, so you do get two headlights on this, which lighting on this is with a reflective daymaker is obviously gonna be a lot better. A lot better output on, on this fairing here. You get the five and three quarter headlight on this. Not a terrible light. Not the best light, but when you're comparing the two, obviously the Rogue Light's gonna have a little bit better lighting. Lowrider SC does have a LED tail light, so lighting is always something you can upgrade. So kind of touching on the ergonomics between the two bikes, really comes and it stems from the background of what you're used to. I grew up on dirt bikes, rode sport bikes a long time. I like to have my foot position sort of underneath me, so I like having a mid-control setup. You get a little bit better lean angle on the Lowrider ST. On the touring bikes, you do get floorboards, so you have more of a movement on a floorboard. So when I'm on my bike, my bike has floorboards, but I took the rear heel shifter off so I can move my feet back more. So I do have forwards, if you will, on a touring bike, but I, when, I, when I'm riding and I rest, my feet are as if I did have mids. So my feet are, I have pretty much a 90 degree bend in my knees. So my feet are underneath me, my kind of heels hang off of the back of the floorboards, kind of naturally where you would sit on a soft tail with a mid control setup, such as the Lowrider ST here. But overall ergonomics is gonna kind of favor how your body type is. If you're taller, shorter, one might be a little better for you. But the good thing about Harley Davidson and these setups here, you can always build the bike to fit you. You can changing the seat, change the suspension, change the controls to make the bike fit you. So adding forwards to this, if you're a little taller rider, or adding a reach seat on this bike to help you reach the ground and reach that kickstand out there. But yeah, ergonomics is kind of gonna boil down to you and kind of what you favor and what you grew up on. If I were to say that one bike is a better hybrid, better at both of those things, I would definitely say that the Lowrider ST is gonna be a better do-it-all Swiss Army knife, like hybrid type of a bike. You take off the bags, you still have the fairing on there. The fairing isn't designed to be removed, so that's always gotta stay on there. But as long as you like that look, and let's face it guys, a lot of us that have bought the Lowrider S's and the Street Bobs and, and you know the whole Dyna movement, a lot of those guys that are putting those fairings on there, you know, whether it be a JD Custom or the Harley PA fairing or there's a million out there, Connolly, you know, wh whatever it may be, a lot of us are running that style anyways and they're just keeping it on there because it, they like the look and the aesthetic of it. And a lot of guys are running the FXRT aftermarket fairings as well. And so if you're someone that just likes the aesthetic anyways, you're not going to take it off anyways, then that's really not that big of a deal that this is not a removable fairing on here. It's, it's a great look, it's a great aesthetic and you have the benefit of, of the wind protection. So let's talk about the wind protection for a second. A lot of people wanna know, okay, just how good 
does the new Lowrider ST fairing match up against like the shark nose or the batwing fairing? I hate putting a number to it, but I'm gonna try just because I feel like people can really understand in their heads a, a little bit more accurately of just what to expect and how it really measures up. And so I would say just from a pure, you know, wind deflection standpoint, I would say this is probably about maybe 70% of what you're gonna get out of a larger fairing. For me personally, I get more of the uneven like wind buffeting on me on this. It definitely, you don't feel like that really heavy drag that you're gonna get without any fairing at all. So it, it definitely takes care of all of that. But you're gonna get a little bit more headwind. You're gonna get a little bit more of the uneven, you know, body wind buffeting and whatnot which isn't a big deal. And, and you know, you can always put a taller windshield on this as well, which will help out a lot. At six foot six inches, I get more headwind than the typical person probably does. But even if you're, you know, of average height, maybe 5'10", you're still gonna get a little bit more head and body winds on you than you are on a bat wing or the a road ride fairing. Two up riding as well. If you're someone that ride, likes to ride with a passenger a lot, and especially too, if you're, you know, you're larger people, you know, I would say for a guy that's 200 pounds plus who throws his companion on the back, who's 130, 140 plus or whatever it may be, then the touring chassis is just going to handle that better. You're going to fit better. If you put two large people on the Lowrider ST, you're going to probably feel cramped. And so again, you always have to factor in just the size of the rider and the passenger as well. But for solo riding, you know, you really, again, has to just take it by a case by case basis on, on what type of riding you're going to be doing the most. And that's really what I always fall back on guys on this channel is you really got to be honest about what type of riding you're going to be doing the most. So many people come in, they look at the two bikes, they buy on the cool factor, which is fine. But when you get out there on the road or you start riding, you know, real regularly, you start riding with friends, then that's really where you're going to start to notice, okay, did I buy the right bike? Does, does the bike that I buy have the proper equipment on it for the type of riding I'm going to be doing? Next step is go in the dealership. If you're lucky enough to have both bikes in stock, sit on both of them, and really going to boil down to, like I said, this is how you're going to use the bike and what you see yourself doing. And another thing too is who you're going to ride with. If all your buddies and you know the people that you see yourself riding with, coworkers, so on and so forth, family, if they're all on touring bikes and they're going to do Sturgis and they're doing Reno or you know your, your local Daytona run or whatever have you, and they're doing a lot of highway miles, you might consider doing more, uh, you know, leaning more of the direction of a touring frame simply because of gas tank ergonomics stuff like that so but that has a big part of it you know people buy bikes they think oh, i'm just going to commute but as they start commuting they set the tone their buddies buy a bike and they're buying bikes and you know pretty soon you have five six people to ride with and you know your, your riding style is going to change once you once you purchase the bike and you start using it so just kind of think ahead my brothers and and the people that i rode with back in the day when they were riding they were all on soft tails and touring bikes and i went out and got a sportster didn't think about who i'm going to be riding with and i had a sportster 48. i had a 2.1 gallon tank and stopping at gas stations every 65 miles or so so that kind of prompted me to get a bigger bike and and kind of shuffle in that direction of going and adapting to the people I'm with. And then there's a little bit of uniqueness between the two and I think it's such a negligible difference what the Lowrider S can do that the touring bike can't do and what the touring bike can do that the Lowrider S can't do. So in that respect I think if you're doing a lot of miles you're better off on the touring bike. If you are doing short stuff and uh, with the occasional long trip, hey man, fill up the bags, put a sissy bar on, strap a big bag to it, go camping, go on your once a year trip. If you're a weekender guy and every weekend you're going two up and you're going long distance, you know, anything 500 plus miles a day, definitely vote for the bagger in that situation. So at the end of the day, guys, hopefully this criteria helps you out that I mentioned. Again, what type of riding you plan on doing? Is it gonna be a little bit more spirited, uh, more agility favored and base riding, canyon riding, things like that? What's your stature? If you're someone that's six feet or under and you're maybe 180 or under, this would be good. And again, that's not gospel, guys. That's just kind of a really rough kind of metric to go off of. If you're someone who's 200 pounds plus or 180 plus and maybe six foot plus, definitely want a touring bike. But really what trumps both of those things is the type of riding you're gonna be doing. I always throw out the metric, okay, if you're on the freeway for more than 50% of your total mileage, if you're doing 65 miles an hour or greater for more than half of your mileage, you're definitely gonna to wanna to consider a, a touring bike. This is gonna do great. In fact, I think probably right out of the box suspension wise without even touching either of these I'm gonna go with the lowrider ST I would be more inclined to change the suspension immediately on a touring bike 
then I would be inclined to change the suspension immediately on one of these soft tails with the taller shock. The, the Lowrider ST has the taller shock that historically has been only available on the Heritage. And so, you know, a, a little less than an inch more in, in total wheel travel on this bike, which, which helps out a lot when you compare it to like a Street Bob or something that has the standard height shock of, of the soft tail. And then I wanna to mention too, just accessories too. So if you're someone that wants to put a tour pack on your bike, you need the additional storage space. Maybe you're going on, you know, a three, four night ride with a passenger, then you're gonna need that extra storage. Things like luggage racks and sit bars things like that are available for the soft tail platform but you're definitely more limited they're not as big and plush and comfortable as something you're gonna find on the touring chassis I think the takeaway here guys is if you're looking for something that is gonna be the best tourer possible from every aspect then the touring chassis is still the king if you're looking for a bike that you still aren't really ready to go into the whole geezer glide as some people would call it you still want to keep a little bit more of a youthful bike and you don't have all the big bulky saddlebags and everything Everything. you want a little sleeker profile on the bike but at the same time you want to be able to get out there and, and hit the open road occasionally and you know be relatively comfortable out on the road and then if you combine that with the fact that maybe your your stature lends more to this smaller platform then this is going to be a slam dunk for you thanks a lot for watching guys as always if i was able to help you out make sure you give me a thumbs up on the video if you haven't already make sure you hit that subscribe button to check out all of our harley davidson content here at laid lots harley davidson if you're looking for a bike in Southern California, make sure you hit us up here at Laid Laws Harley Davidson. We'll see you on the next one, guys. Later.